I got a promise this morning. The Lord's going to let me play the cello on that when we get to heaven. <laughs> Amen. Well, glory to God. Well, good morning. He's risen. Risen indeed. Take your Bible. Go to John 21. We'll begin reading there in just a moment. Read the first 19 verses in John 21. Now, this morning, I am beginning a four-part series before we get to May and go back into the book of Acts. I'm going to be preaching four weeks on the theme, This is Revival. And we're going to begin this morning with a message that I've entitled, A Fisherman's Revival. Just for you, Brother Danny, down here on the front row, amen. A Fisherman's Revival. But we're going to talk about this is revival the next few weeks, for four weeks, and preaching around that theme. There's been a little stirring across our nation, and I want us to throw gas on that and pray that God revive His church and that we would see Uh, that happened. It's a sovereign act. You can't make it, but you can have as much revival inside the circle of your own life as you want. You just draw a circle around you, do what the Scripture says, and I'm here to tell you revival is on the way for you, and then it may just explode among us, and I'm praying that it will happen here, this campus, maybe on the Warrington campus. I don't know. I love those guys down there. Thankful to God. I was there two or three weeks ago. And uh, thankful for them, for those three men that lead out and our staff and many others that are down there. And I want you to be continuing to pray uh, for Mike, John, Jamie, others that are there working. And thank God uh, for them. Uh, They'll be listening in on this uh, message today. And so uh, you pray that God does a great work. And God love you, Warrington family. Uh, We're thankful to God. Uh, for you. Amen. Church, just say hello to Warrington, wouldn't you? Amen. Yeah. Thank God for them and all the work uh, that's going on down there. Well, amen for hope, the hope uh, of heaven. Olympia, they singing that song, and I was praying for you, sweet lady, with her mother's death this week. Had another call this morning. The other person's mother had stepped into heaven uh, during uh, the nighttime hours, and Uh, death comes, but thank God uh, for the glory of our great God. Uh, There was a doctor here on Friday night, came and uh, took care of Beth Harris in the hospital. Uh, Brother Mark, that doctor said to me, I I let her down. I said, oh, no, no, no. You didn't let her down. God took her up. Amen. Pointed unto us. We, We just live unto him. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Welcome again on this Easter morning. We're in John's Gospel today, uh, a fisherman's revival. Something happened to the fisherman Peter, and revival came. And I want us to look at it, apply it to our lives, and then give a gospel invitation and invite you to come today and say yes to Jesus. Come join this church. Come today and fall in this altar and say, oh, God, have your way in my life this day. John's Gospel, chapter 21. The first 19 verses. You follow along because this now is the word of our great God. After these things, after what things? Well, the Lord's appeared after his death. And after these things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he manifested himself in this way. Simon Peter And Thomas, called Didymus, that word means a twin. Most people think Thomas was a twin because of that name. And Nathanael of Canaan, Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we'll also come with you. They went out and got in a boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, and yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? You do not have any fish, do you? And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll find a catch. So they cast, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. 
Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, he said to Peter, it's the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard it, that it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on, for he was stripped for work, and he threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards away, dragging the net full of fish. So when they got out, uh, got on the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land. Well, you know that somebody who's a fisherman's got to be right in this. (laughs) Drew the net to land full of large fish. Ain't no slot fish in this, Danny. Amen. No, these large fish, 153. Although there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to question him, who are you, knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and the fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus was manifested to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my lambs. And he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk whether you wished But when you grow old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now this he said signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, and all the people of God say those words of command. And Jesus said to him, Peter, follow me. Something turned Peter from denial to defender. From one who denied Jesus to one who defended and proclaimed him. Something happened in Peter's life. He's had a fisherman's revival. J. Edwin Orr says out of Acts chapter 3 that revival can be defined as times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. When the presence of the Lord comes, there is a a refreshing, a reanimating, a reviving of the spirit life. Dear friends, if the church of the living God in the United States of America ever needed a reanimation and a reviving, it is this year, 2023. We need that. We stand in the need of a wind from elsewhere to refresh us and to empower us. Now, Peter, if you go back just three chapters to John 18... Jesus is being carried to Calvary, carrying the cross. Simon the Cyrene is given the cross, and he drags it, and they go to Calvary. And just before they are there, there is the judgment, and three people come because Peter's in the back. Peter's already shrinking back. The little girl says, you're, you're one of them. And Peter said, "Hmm, I am not, in John 18, in verse 17, chapter 18, 17, I am not. 
another person in a little later. Came. You, you, you were with him. He said, I am not. No. No. And then another person came the third time. The Bible says it was a relative of the man from the garden that Peter had drawn out a sword and cut off his ear. A relative of the earless man. Well, he wasn't really earless because Jesus healed him. Hmm. And the Bible says Peter cursed and said, no, I am none of his. You fast forward, crucifixion, three days later, fishing boat. Something happened because Acts chapter 2 comes and Peter stands up. And Peter said, this Jesus God raised up again and we, I am a witness of this. What in the world happened to Peter to get him from denial to defender? My Lord, something happened. What happened? I'm telling you what happened. The resurrected Jesus became king and lord and boss, potentate, president, power of his life. He set him on fire at a breakfast camp meeting. And God changed his life. Peter said in verse 3, I'm going fishing. He is the leader of the pack, so they all said, well, we're going with you. They fished all night, didn't catch nothing. <laughs> you ever fished all day and never catch anything? Unless you're a lion fisherman, you just said yes. <laughs> and there was Jesus standing on the shore and said, hey, boys, you catch anything? He knew. They said, no. Hmm. He said, throw the net on the right side of the boat. The miracle of the catch came. And they hauled in 153 big ones. That's what the Bible says. Jerome, the church historian Jerome in the first century says the, the number 153 is symbolic. He said, that's how many different kinds of fish was in the Sea of Galilee. Not how many fish, but various kinds of fish. And Jerome says, I don't know if that's true or not. Jerome, the historian of the first century, says that it was emblematic that Jesus would draw men from every tribe, every tongue, from every nation, from every walk to come to himself. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that truth is true. That Jesus died for the sin of the whole world. And his harvest is for red and yellow, black and white. Up and down, left and right. He draws us all unto himself. And he came to the shore. Peter had taken off his outer garment so that he could work at the fishing. But then we saw it was Jesus. He put back on the outer garment and, and everybody else rowed to the shore. But Peter jumped in. He swims 100 yards to the shore or walks in that shallow water. He gets to the water edge and comes to Jesus. Jesus already cooking breakfast. This is our Lord. He, he, he's already prepared the meal. He's got the fish on the griddle. Bread is there. He said, where do you get fish and bread? He made all the fish. He has any fish he wants, all right? <laughs> you, you never get back from fishing with Jesus with an empty net, all right? Amen. They take and eat. Mm. And you just see them sitting around, fished all night. They're tired. And then Jesus turns and says, Peter, let's have a little chat. He asks him three times, do you love me? Yes, Lord, do you love me? Yeah. Certainly he asked him three times because he had denied him three times, and that is what he's doing here. He is underlining that denial. But God sets Peter on fire. 
And he'll do that for all of us. If we will respond like Peter responded, what kind of revival came to the big fisherman? First of all, it was a simple revival of loving Jesus. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He asked him three times, do you agape me? Do you agape me? Then he asked him, do you phileo me? That is the word for friendship. Do you love me like God loves, like God loves it in, like a friend loves? And Peter responds. Friend, if you're going to have revival in your life, listen to this preacher. If you're going to have revival in your life, if we're going to have revival in this church, you must love Jesus more than all. More than anyone, more than anything, he must be the love of your life. The Shema says it in Deuteronomy 6, 5, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Jesus quoted that in Luke 10 and verse 27 when he said to his disciples, you must love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Let me ask you this morning, Olive Baptist Church, hear me, your shepherd wants to know, do you love Jesus? Then the question turns to to the preacher, Ted. Do you love Jesus? I can only answer that. Then you must answer. Friend, I don't know who you are on this Easter morning. But Jesus got a question for you today. Do you love him? With all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. My wife been gone all week. She got back Friday night. She's gone seven days, and I, I saw her. I flew in last Friday from Augusta from preaching. She was flying out. And I met her. We were both in the airport, going and coming. I met her at Chick Fil A. I kissed my wife at the Chick-fil-A or the Pensacola airport. I'd never done that before. Amen. I said, darling, I see you. Seven days. I went out. and Our church men picked me up, took me home. I waited and waited. I text her every day. I said, honey, I love you just a little bit. I don't love you, first of all. I mean, you know, I love you like I love everybody else. And uh, and Several ladies have been coming by the house cooking. and uh, (laughs) You know, everything's all right. Don't worry about me. I'm I'm good. I got plenty of people to take care of me. You know, you're you're just one of many. And so I'm. (laughs) How long do you think that lasts? Huh? Well, let me tell you, friend, if you love Jesus like that, If you think that makes Liz angry, oh, you ought to meet the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You must love him singular, first, with all your heart, with all your soul, all your might. Sold out. That's when revival comes. It's when it's a revival of loving Jesus, first of all. But not only is it a revival of loving Jesus, it, it's a revival of loving sheep. <laughs> he says to him, do you love me? Yes, love, yes, love. Yeah. Well, then if you do love me, tend my sheep, feed my sheep, care for my... Let me tell you, friend, if you love God, first of all, you're going to love all these nasty folks around you. You're going to feed the sheep and tend the sheep. The Bible says we are to love one another. Listen to what Jesus said in John 15, verses 12 and 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. John 13, he says in verse 35, How will men know that you are my disciples, that you have loved one for another? Mm. You, you just love him, Peter did. And then he says, Peter loved the sheep. Tend my sheep. And, and Peter becomes the shepherd, the first shepherd. He shepherds the church in Acts. 
He loves the sheep. If you love the sheep, you love their gathering. So you, you love the Sunday gathering of the church. That's how revival comes when you, you gather. And you love the sheep. You tend the sheep. You feed the sheep. You participate with the sheep. Some of you are here today and you say you love Jesus, but you've never connected with a local body of believers. If you live here, come be a part. If, if you live elsewhere, go and, and be a part of that family. Love the sheep. It's all we got. Love the sheep. Did I tell you my wife been gone for a week? <laughs> she left me but she didn't leave me by myself. She has a cat. <laughs> After I kissed her to Chick-fil-A, I came home. And up on the wall, the cabinet, and she, she took the cabinet that has the plates behind it. She knew where I'd go first. I can't, I, every time I'd open that cabinet, there's a, Eight and a half by 11. Single space typed. I'm not talking about a, a line or two. I'm talking 20 lines. You let her out here. You go over there. You feed her this much. Then you do that. Then you get the little pooper scooper out. And you get that out of the thing. And you put it in a plastic bag. And you put it in there. And, and then at 5.30 you go back and you open one can and you put it in there and, and, and you go and then you don't use the same dish. You clean the dish and you get the other one out and you, and you bring it. and you. Do. I'm a grown man with a doctor's degree. <laughs> I've been to school. <laughs> Amen. I know how to feed a cat. That cat got depressed. <laughs> we sitting home last night. That cat came up and, and got on its back and laid out on my wife right there. I said, that cat needs to see a psychologist. <laughs> she crazy. If you do that for your animals, how much more should you take care of God's sheep? You listening to me? You cannot say I love the shepherd if you don't care for the sheep. He gives us explicit instructions of how we are to tend and love and feed and care. You, you ought to be a part of this church. You, just a minute, I'm going to give an invite. I want you to walk right there and say, Pastor, give me your hand, God, your heart. I'm ready to be a part of this church. You want to know more about it, go out by those tables. To We've got tables out there. We're discovering Olive. It's next Sunday after the second service. And you come, I'll feed you lunch, and I'll tell you all about the church. And we'd love you to be a part. We, we want you to, but you need to be a part. You need to engage with this fellowship. Peter had a revival. Of loving Jesus. He, he had a revival of loving sheep. But now thirdly, he had a revival of loving obedience. And, and the Lord said to Peter, do you love me? Yes, then tend my sheep. And, and then he tells him, you're going to live for a while, then you're going to die. He tells him, you're going to get old and somebody's going to walk you. And, and, and they're going to put you here and you're going to die. But until then, just two words. Follow me. Follow me. Finney, the great evangelist of yesteryear, Finney, said it this way, Revival is a new beginning of obedience to God. That's what revival is. 
A new beginning of obedience to God. God calls you. When, when you get saved, first step of obedience, baptism. If you hadn't been baptized, you hadn't been obedient. You need to come. God calls you to love one another and forgive of those that have hurt you because you've been hurt. If you've been breathing long, you've been hurt. And the Bible says forgive. And you're to love like Jesus loved. He says to give. Blessed, well, blessed to give this to receive. You ought to be a tither. And, and so that's a step of obedience. You ought to serve. Oh, Friday night we had that. I shared with you about those seven guys down at the waterfront. What a great time. Our folks went down there serving, loving on those men. They were baptized in a cattle trough. It was a great time. They just, these guys came back. Who got blessed the most? The guys baptized or the ones, I'm telling you, the folks doing the servings, ones got blessed. Yeah, they, they were just being obedient. If there's something you need to do to obey Jesus today, you know it right now. I don't have to preach on it. I want to say the Spirit of the living God is telling you right now that is your step of obedience. He doesn't hide that from you. The Spirit of God will say, there. When I go home from here, I drive out the back gate on Bob Davis hit the road and take a right, go down back over to my house. There's a little house back over here. I've been driving by and driving by and driving by and driving by. In one window, there's a University of Florida towel, and in the other window, there's a University of Alabama towel. Right there. Gators and tiger, right there. There's an old boy sitting out. It doesn't matter. Time of day. He's got sitting on the front porch with his phone smoking. Just chilling. I've driven by there for months and months and months. And I keep saying, Lord, I ought to stop by there. I ain't getting nothing. Yesterday, I was going home, and I'm telling you, I heard the Holy Ghost of God say, Today. You're going to preach in obedience. I want you to stop today. I said, well, Lord, I'm kind of busy. You know, I got uh, don't need a great time. So I just pulled off the road. That's the fastest I've ever seen that guy move, I'm telling you. <laughs> I didn't even go up to the door. I just referenced the two towels. I said, I've been coming by and seeing that. I just wondered, which one are you? And he told me about his team. And then he said, you are. I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, I've been there a long time ago. I said, well, we'd love to have you come again. I could not stand and preach to you today, point three, if I hadn't stopped my car over there yesterday. I know I didn't give away. I didn't get to the gospel. I, I didn't even get to the door yet. I just took step one. I'll just find out which team he's on. Then I'm going to find out which team he's on. You just build a friendship, and then you just obey God. You obey God. You see, the resurrected Christ is alive today. Jesus came, and he lived. God became flesh. And then they crucified him, and he died for your sins. That's the gospel. For God loved the world, he gave his son. And Jesus became, it's a big old Bible word for it, called the propitiation. Propitiation. The redemption. He's the price paid. He's the redeemer. He, he paid all the price for your sin and mine. Mm. Hallelujah. And then they buried him. He stayed in the ground three days, three nights, and he, he got up. They rolled a stone away, and he came out. The women were there first. The women are always there first. In the church, they'll be more faithful. They'll drag the men along. Thank God, ladies, for you. Keep dragging us. Peter showed up. Well, what happened here? <laughs> He's gone. 
There's an angel who's here. He's told us he's, he's gone. Peter met him on the shore. And later the Bible says that Jesus came in the room in Jerusalem and he, oh, oh, he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit of God. When you get saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God in the great dispensational transformation came right there and the Spirit of God came into Peter's life and it was on the resurrected Jesus was moving and calling and changing and empowering. And I'm telling you, the same Jesus is moving and calling and changing and empowering today. He's walking up and down these aisles. He's walking between these pews. And he's saying, you, 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 and you, you, come follow me. He said, preacher, I don't, I don't believe all that. You don't have to. You, you don't have to. You don't have to believe that he's alive. You will believe it one day, but you don't have to believe it today. But I'm here to tell you, when you die, you will see him. And he will say to you, depart from me. I never knew you. Or if you love him, he'll say, enter into the joy of your Lord. He's alive today. The year was 1977. NBC ran the two-part series, Jesus of Nazareth. And in Philadelphia... The Philadelphia Inquirer got a letter. They get many letters to the editor. And in 1977, they received a letter that they printed in the Inquirer in Philadelphia in 1977. Where a person asked this question. I enjoyed watching the Jesus of Nazareth series on NBC. Can you tell me? Can I find it in book form? And the Philadelphia Inquirer, 1977, not 1923, or not 2023. In 1977, the Philadelphia Inquirer responded to that letter with this. It was printed 2,000 years ago in its original form. You can find the story in full in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But if you want the NBC version, it is available from Barentine Books for $1.95. Read whichever one you want to. He got up. He got up. This book says they buried him and he got up. And, and when he got up, he went to work at a fishing camp. And Peter, hey, my goodness, what, what a great picture Jesus gave us. The first servant in the church, Jesus. Fixing breakfast. Billy, Lisa, Catherine, Eddie, Elizabeth, do you love me? Lord, you know what? Do you love me? Do you love me? Feed my lambs tend my sheep and the great shepherd ascended back to heaven in a few days and he left us here full of the Holy Ghost and if you draw a circle around yourself and if you love Jesus with all your heart and love the sheep as you should love and if you will obey him as he's held you to, you will have revival at your house. And if all of us began to do that in a corporate way at this place called Olive, we'll see the wind of God blow and revival come in this house. I'm going to invite you to obedience today.
I'm going to invite you out. There's a great crowd here this morning. I'm going to invite you out of that balcony to come right here and, and say, Pastor, this is what God's calling me to do today. I'm coming to be saved. I'm coming to join the church. I'm, I'm coming today just in confession, maybe just kneel on this altar. You need to come to me. I'm going to invite you. I had several people this week. I don't know if they're in this service or the next, and I'm coming Sunday, preacher. I'm going to come take your hand and, and say yes. If you're on that Warrington campus, come and talk to one of our leaders that's there. and They extend that invitation uh, to you. You come and say yes to them. Maybe you came on that van from the base today then you come to Jesus this day God loves you we thank you for serving our nation and pray you'll serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords with all of your heart and all of your mind all of your soul and if you're on this campus I invite you to come if you're watching by television radio I invite you get on your knees and say yes to King Jesus he's walking up and down these aisles between these pews and he's got one word Follow me. Follow me. Come on. Follow me. I'm going to pray. When I say amen, we stand up. John begins to sing, and you're coming in this invitation time this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you for your truth, for your word. I pray and give you thanks today that you lived and died and rose. And now you call us. Oh, Father, help us to follow close. Follow close after you. Have your way. My heart and every heart, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.